Married for 37 years, Ken and Lisa minister in the USA, Brazil, Russia, Israel, and are called to save the nations. Lisa, born from the Gentile nations into a family of pastors, and Ken, a New Yorker born from Jewish parents. At his bar mitzvah, those who heard Ken speak say he is destined to be a rabbi. Together, they teach how to practically walk in the Hebrew Christian roots of the faith and the revelation of Torah with the prophetic revelation and the power of the Spirit. It's time to hit the mark. I want to talk to you today about God is Unlimited, part two, okay? In His power and in His promises is the truth. His power and His promises are the truth. The world, what they're telling you is not truth, okay? His word is truth. And He will bring supernatural increase beyond anything we have ever experienced before in this season do you receive that Amen. okay so what happens what can what can limit god's power the only thing that limits god's power is when his children speak negative in psalm 7 78 verse 40 through 42 it says this is this is um david talking about israel but i think we can all relate to this how many times they rebelled in the desert days how they grieved him Adonai with their grumblings again and again they limited God preventing him from blessing them it's right there negative talk prevents God's blessing continually they turn back from him and provoke the Holy One of Israel they forgot his great love and how he took them by his hand and with redemption's kiss he delivered them from their enemies so negative talk limits the blessing in your life god is pouring out the blessing the word of the lord is wealth increase right wealth transfer new door of increase he'll bless you that's the word of the lord god told israel i'm gonna take you to the promised land but what happened only two people believed it when they actually walked in the promised land the other ones had negative talk and because of it they do you realize that everyone in Israel who were above 20 years old didn't partake of the promised land? Mm -hmm. They couldn't go in. That was a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 20 and under mm -hmm. got to go in. 20 years and under. So that's how that I want you to realize when we start speaking negative against God's word. What do I mean by negative? I don't think God's going to bless me. I, I think, I, you know what? They're going to lay me off this week. I see it coming right now. Oh boy, there's a lot of turmoil in my office. I just don't know what I'm going to do. My kids are going crazy right now. They, they just won't be quiet. Negative, negative, negative. Do you know that when we speak negative, it's a sign, the Bible says, well in this week's Torah portion, this was what's so cool. God gave me this about negative talk last week, and then I'm reading the Torah portion and it's all about negative talk, right? So do you know that negative talk um, is a sign of weak faith? When we speak negative, we're actually... So what's the opposite of faith? Fear, right? So when we speak negative, we are having weak faith. And in the Torah portion, it also said that when we speak negative, it's a haughty spirit. And it can even turn into blaspheming. And that's what happened with Israel. They blasphemed God's promises. God said, this is what I'm going to do for you. And they said, the land, we can't go in the land. There's giants in the land. We can't defeat them, right? So it was like a blaspheming. Now, I don't know if you understand this, but blaspheming is serious in the, in the word of God. You don't blaspheme, okay? Because what happened to Israel was they were cut off from their blessing. A person of strong faith has confidence that God is in charge and is working all things for their good. He is not given, given to complaining because he believes that everything is ultimately in God's hands. I want you to realize this. Everything is in God's hands. Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, And we must not embrace their ways, talking about Israel, by complaining, grumbling, with discontent, as many of them did and were killed by the destroyer. All the tests they endured on their way through the wilderness
wilderness are a symbolic picture, an example that provides us with a warning so that we can learn through what they experience. We, for we live in a time when the purpose of all the ages past is now, completing its goal within us. So beware, if you think it could never happen to you, lest your pride becomes your downfall. What is he saying? God put it in the Torah, all the things that happened to Israel as a warning to us so we don't have to go through it. And it, when we talk negative, I told you, it's a sign of pride. And, and if we think as believers, oh, I'll never be like Israel. I'll never talk negative. He says it right here. Beware. You will because that's, that's pride. So we have to ultimately put our trust in God and God's word. And don't let negativity come out of your mouth. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 23, this is what God says to Moses. Is Adonai's arm too short? Now you will see whether my word will come true, true for you or not. Whenever the enemy's coming at you and he's going, nah, 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 it's not going to work. Remember this. This is what I always, it, whenever we're going through something, Ken and I, I always say this. Lord, your arm is not too short. Lord, your arm is not too short. And when you do that, you will see quickly that the negative thoughts and tongue will shift to faith. I want you guys to be expecting today you're going to get a blessing. Today, you're going to get wealth transferred. Today, a new door of increase. I want you to be the way. Don't look at the, all the negative that's going on around us in this world. Stand on the word. Stand on his promises. And God will do it for you and through you. Now, I'm going to give you my testimony. So this week has been one of those crazy weeks. My phone went on the blink. I mean, everything that could possibly happen, happened, right? And I ha I'm telling you that I experienced what I'm teaching you today. And I had to get it together, okay? I had to have a come to Jesus meeting. No. And I had to get on my knees and say, Lord, this is the enemy. And I rebuke this negativity and all this attack right now. And I'm not going to get caught up in what's happening. I put my trust in you. And I'm, I'm telling you what I said. Lord, you promised save the nations. Wealth transfer. I'm a part of save the nations. You promised new door of increase. So go about my week. I don't see anything change. It's still the same, still the same, still the same. Go to the mailbox. And there's a letter. Lisa Alden. <laughs> okay, you got to understand. When I see my name, I, because it's always Ken. <laughs> when I see Lisa Alden, I, like, get all excited, right? Like, who wrote me a letter? <laughs> you know? And I ripped that letter open. And inside was the exact amount of money that I believe God for every month. I had, the Lord and I have an agreement. There's something that I give to every month. And I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, I want you to give it to me. I know we're one and I, I get all that. But I want you to supernaturally give it to Lisa, okay? And I want you to know every month Every single, this has never happened to me in all 56 years of my life. I'm telling you right now, God provides my seed. And on top of that, there will always be another blessing that comes to both of us through my giving of that seed. Every month I have watched God since January do this. He never fails. You know why? Because I do what I teach you, I do. Okay? I activate my faith. And it's coming from people that don't live here. Okay? I want you to understand they don't even live in South Florida. Okay? And I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh! Wow! You know, it's like, I can't believe it. this person just, you know, I know God did it, but this person, like, and I just, then I get it, and I got in the car, I text Pastor Ken, I said, got my seat and then I cried all the way home praising the Lord I said God you're a good God you're a faithful God why am I telling you if he'll do it for me he'll do it for you it's all about activating your faith and not allowing negative talk to come out of your mouth 
and keep doing what you're doing. God is faithful. Amen? All right, we're going to receive the tithe and offering. Father, I thank you for your word and your promise. Your arm is not too short. Lord, if we have spoken negatively this week, we repent right now. We ask you to, to forgive us. Wash us in your blood. Wash our mouth out right now. Sanctify our mouth right now that God... We will not be like the children of Israel that doubted you, that questioned you, that um, did not believe that your word is true. We will not, Lord. We, we choose to walk in faith. But we thank you, Holy Spirit. It is you who leads us and guides us. And you are the one who warns us. So, Father, I, ask, I give you permission, Holy Spirit, to speak loud to each one of us all throughout this week. But whenever a negative word tries to come out of our mouth, Holy Spirit, speak loud. Close our mouths in the name of Jesus. Close our mouths, Lord, that we will not speak, but we will put our trust in you and we will declare your word over our life. I thank you for wealth transfer for every tither and save the nations. I thank you for new doors of increase. New doors. You said it. You promised it. And Lord, we believe it and we receive it right now. In Yeshua's name, amen. Once you understand the Bible in context of the roots of your faith, when you understand that the Bible is seamless from Genesis to Revelation, when you start understanding that everything Jesus taught was not new, everything written in the New Testament is not new. It is in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. It's concealed. Sometimes it's in a seed form. But once you start learning about this and then you learn about who you are, that you are um, an heir of God, you're a joint heir with Jesus, that you're, a, you're of the seed of Abraham, and you get the same covenant, the same blessings, the same privileges, it's going to change the way you read the scripture. And I'm telling you, we've been in ministry our whole life, and we've yeah. been doing this walk for about four years. Yeah. And literally... Every time I read the Bible, it's like I never saw that before. And I read the Bible more than you would ever imagine. This is my career. This is my life. I love the Word and I eat the Word. So when I tell you that when I read the Bible, I am writing notes. It's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And I'm like, is this a new Bible? It's the same Bible, but I didn't have the perspective of what we're, we're teaching you and what, we're, what the Lord has brought us into because we were living mostly by a Greek mindset mm -hmm. and we didn't understand the Hebrew mindset which has to do with practically walking it out and it's not just a head knowledge and the Greek mindset kind of spiritualizes everything mm -hmm. so Anyway, we, we, we just love teaching this. And so we're going to talk today about something very important. And I want you to understand it for yourself because we are living in a day right now where there is a lot of division. There's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of separation. And the answer to the division, the answer to the, to the division is in the scriptures. You understand, God has an answer for the division. God has an answer for prejudice. God has an answer yes. for hatred. Yes. You understand that? And the answer is in the revelation of the one new man. When you begin to understand that you've been grafted in to and you are you have been grafted into Israel and you have become part of the one new man you never feel like you're not included you never feel like there's a separation us and them mm -hmm. um, no, you, you begin to realize, oh my goodness, I'm an heir, I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I have, I'm married, uh, I mean, I, I'm blessed, I have brothers and sisters, yes. and we are one in Messiah, yes. and there's no black, no white, no bond, no free, no male, no fe no, nor female, there's no circumcision, there's no uncircumcision, that's Galatians chapter 3. Right. 
It doesn't mean that there's no man and theme, man and woman. It doesn't mean that there's no Jew and Gentile. What it means is that your natural identity is in Messiah. Yeah. Jesus, the Jesus identity, you're in him. He's in you. And he covers, if you will, he swallows, if you will, your natural identity. So when you really walk around in this earth, you know not by the flesh, you know by the spirit. spirit. Yes, hallelujah. So when you see people, you don't know them by the flesh, you don't know them. By, well, you're black, you're white. And, and truthfully, we're, Pastor Lisa and I, we've been living, we have, well, I mean, our daughter's raised multicultural. Yeah. yeah. If you live in Florida for the last, how, now when I was in high school, it wasn't quite that way in the 80s, it really wasn't like that. But come the 90s and 2000s, yeah. we in Florida, you, this is just part of it, it. They say it's the nations and the melting pot. We're in it. Yes. And we never even thought this person's this, this person's that. that. We, in fact, her dad used to preach a sermon. He said, <laughs> we're all green. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anyone you remember that. <laughs> that's funny. And it's more, that's more important today than ever. But he was preaching back then 30 years ago saying, don't look at the outside. Look at who's on the inside. Yes, yes. So once you understand this one new, what you say, one, new. one, one, one ehad, one composite, there's not separation in that word one. Mm, in the word one, there is wholeness. Do you see that? Yeah. There's shalom in oneness. Now, so let's just read that just so you, you have an idea. And then we're going to show you the root of the separation. The root of the vision. Because you've got to know where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Ephesians says, ethnic, Ephesians 2, 15 through 19. Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. The legal code that stood condemning every one of us has now been repealed by his command. His triune essence has made peace between us by starting over forming one new race of humanity. Most translations say one new man. Jews and non-Jews. What? Fused together to have now become I feel the Holy Spirit yeah, on this yeah. to have now become one you guys get me worked up every day every Saturday and we live restored to God and reconciled in the body of Christ through his crucifixion hatred died wow that's good stuff for the Messiah has come to preach this sweet message of peace. Hallelujah. How sweet it is to be loved by you. Mm -mm -mm. Sweet message of peace to you. The ones, listen to it, look at this. The ones who were distant. Do you see that's past tense? Mm -hmm. And to those who are near. So he's talking about the Jews and he's talking about the non-Jews because the Jews were near because that's who Messiah came through. He came through Judah. But the, the ones who were far from him were the, were the house of Israel who went astray, who got swallowed up by the nations. And now because we are united to Christ, look at this, we have both equal and direct Access in the realm of the Holy Spirit to come before the Father. There is one Father. There's one Lord. There's one baptism. There's one body. There's one fellowship, communion. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. With all the rights as family members of the household of God. Now, you're going to see a theme in the scriptures that nations were invited to come into covenant 
God always had a heart for nations. When you read, for God so loved the world, you can say, for God so loved the nations. You can trace it back to the Torah scripture where the Lord says, love the stranger as yourself. The Lord loves the strangers. They were invited to come into covenant, the same covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. Israel was to be a first fruit nation to shine the light of God's Torah, of His Word, to the rest of the world, showing them that this is the way, walk in it, this is life, this is blessing. And you'll see this theme from Genesis to Revelation, but you'll also see this theme challenge, twisted. Because Satan himself hates the Lord and he's envious of man. He does not like man. He doesn't like that man could be in covenant, that man could be like God. Right. Isaiah 57, 19 says, I will create the right words. Shalom, shalom. This is amazing. To those far off and to those nearby, says Adonai. Look what he says. I will what? Heal. There's got to be a healing. And it really already took place on the cross. When Jesus died, when Jesus was buried, when Jesus was resurrected, he actually facilitated the healing. Now, it doesn't mean we walk in it, but it's there. It's available. That's why the cry of the angel said, peace on earth and what? Goodwill to who? Men. All men. It was available. We know the fullness of this healing won't take place until the millennium where the lion and the lamb and the little kids, I was reading it, the little kid can actually put his hand in a viper's den and not be afraid that the serpent, because the serpent won't sting anymore. But in the meanwhile, we have to be this agent of healing. we got to shine this light that God took care of the division. He doesn't want us to walk in the division. Look in Ephesians 3. For this reason, grasping the greatness of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in Christ, I bow my knees in reverence before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, God the first and the ultimate Father. Look at somebody and tell them we have the same Father. What's our problem? That's right. If we have the same father, yes. we are brothers, we are sisters, yes. we are united, Amen. and we shouldn't be divided. Amen. We're part of a family. So if you look at the first roots of division from the entirety of the scriptures, you'll see that the woman aligns with the serpent to take what God commanded not. She was given to be a helper for the man to maintain dominion and fruitfulness in the kingdom. So the first division happens when the woman who should have helped the man keep the Torah, she actually aligns with the serpent and says, no, look at this fruit. It's so good. I know God said no, but look at it. Look at it. Adam. And if you don't know how much power a woman has to influence you need to talk to Pastor Lisa after the service. Mm -hmm. Then, let's look at the next division. So, first division, the woman sides with the serpent over God. Second division, the man blames the woman instead of covering her as an act of love. The woman, you gave me. It's her fault. You see that? So Adam, when he's confronted, what does he say? Yeah. Yeah. Division. Do you see that? Division. This is this is part of him. They're one. Yeah, that's so good. He's really accusing himself. You gotta understand that. You can't accuse the woman and not be accusing yourself. They were one. But he divides. And then the serpent or a snake, if you start studying out in the Hebrew, you'll find out he's actually a twister of truth. You can even see when you see that they put the snake or the serpent on the pole, even as it's the, the medical profession's um, 
logo, if you will. What does the, the serpent is twisted? It's in his nature to twist the word. To twist truth. To deceive. So he's a thief who sought to take the glory or man's covering to exalt himself. And if you actually study that word serpent and, the, and, and write in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, you'll see one of the root words means to uncover. The serpent wants to take our covering, the covering of glory, because he was jealous. He didn't have the covering of glory. Then, the word says there's going to be enmity or hatred between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. And enmity is the strongest word for hatred in the Bible. It literally means to be hostile, to have hostility. So you have to understand, right in the book of Genesis, first three chapters, you see all of a sudden there's this division and now there's an enmity. There's a hatred between who? The serpent and the seed of the woman. The seed of the woman is going to become Israel. Jesus, Yeshua, is part of that seed of the woman. In Revelation, the Bible talks about the dragon making war with the woman and the rest of her offspring, her seed, which is you and I who believe in the Lord. So there's a hatred, there's an enmity. Where's this hatred coming from? It's coming from the serpent. He hates you. But on the other hand, you, you need to hate him. This hostility needs to be towards him, but not towards people. Okay, you see that in Genesis 3.15. So immediately after Adam and Eve were banished and punished with curses, another division arose. Mm -hmm. The first murder in the Bible when Cain, the first marked man for shedding innocent blood, killed righteous Abel who gave his first fruits and best to God. So Cain kills his brother because the Lord accepts Abel's offering and he doesn't accept his offering because Abel gives the first fruits, the best, and Cain gives the leftovers. Mm -hmm. And when God said, Abel, uh, Cain, listen, if you do good, you'll be accepted. But if not, sin is crouching at the door, ready to attack you. He got mad at God and took it out on his brother. In fact, if you read the scripture correctly, you'll find out that that first murder and the blood of Abel is still crying out for justice. So if you have to, if you just get this in your mind, and I can show you this through the scriptures, and it's powerful. Because God looks for justice, and he says, I heard a cry. And he's talking about, I hear the cry of blood. Mm -hmm. And if you see in the life of David, and you'll see the scripture where it says, that, uh, in Israel, it says, God refused to forgive the innocent blood that was shed. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because innocent blood is still crying out right now for justice. Crazy, right? Now, you're learning something. Yeah. The root of division actually predates man's first days on the earth. Now look at John 8, chapter, uh, second page. You belong to your father, Satan, and you want to carry out your father's desires for, look at this, from the start, he was a murderer. He has never stood by truth because there's no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he's speaking his his own he's speaking in character because he's a liar. Indeed, look at this, the inventor of a lie. But as for me, because I tell you truth, you don't believe me. 
Now we know that between Genesis 1 and Genesis chapter 2, something had to happen to make the earth, earth into chaos. It was chaos. God doesn't create chaos. Somehow, look, if you look in Revelation 12, it kind of gives us a key that uh, before man arrived on earth, there was a war in heaven. Apparently, there was a murder. He's a murderer from when? The beginning. Before, in the beginning. It's before you even got here. Look in Revelation 12. Consider this. Verse 3. Consider this. Another astonishing miracle. Sign appeared in heaven. I saw a huge fiery dragon with ten horns and seven heads, each wearing a royal crown. He was wearing seven royal crowns. The dragon's massive tail swept across the sky. And drag, look at this. He dragged away a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. If you read the first chapter of Revelation, it tells you that the stars are angels. They are messengers. Revelation chapter 12 is a chapter that gives you, it's kind of like the center of the book of Revelation. It, 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 it was, oh, how did I do that? I don't want to explain this to you guys. But the way the Bible is written many times, the center is the main point. And then to the left and to the right, it it's like a mirror image so you can understand both sides from that center. So it's kind of like an information chapter that gives you history. It already happened. It wasn't like it's going to happen. Revelation chapter 12 already happened. And you'll read it. And so what does Satan do in his rebellion, in his murder? He takes what? One third of the angels and he is cast to the earth. And the dragon crouched before the woman who was about to give birth, poised to devour the baby the moment it was born. Now you can see this scripture playing out because Satan thought Moses was that baby. Mm -hmm. He thought over and over, this, maybe this is the baby, maybe right. this is the baby. And right. he would kill the children because he was afraid this is the baby. And every time the earth mm. helped the woman. Okay. Now, Isaiah 9, 15 says this. Now remember, Satan takes his tail. The dragon uses his tail. Now we know the Bible says we're the head and not the tail. tail but there's more to that. I want you to see in the Isaiah, the prophet. The elder and honorable. We, we got to preach this. Oh, we ought to preach gosh. this. You ought to take this. Yep. In, the, in the midst of the, the, the demonic thing that's trying to hurt our elderly yeah. right now. The elder and honorable, he is the head. Is there any wonder why there's been some kind of conspiracy to hurt the elderly? Yeah. If you can't figure it out, there's money behind it. <laughs> or demonic. Or both. The elder and honorable, look at this. He is what? The head. The prophet who teaches lies, he is the tail. What does Satan do? He's a prognosticator. He's a type of prophet, but he's a false prophet. And he, you, and he preaches what? Lies, because that's what the tail does. Now, look at Revelation 12. Again, verse 7. Then a terrible war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. This has already happened. The dragon and his angels fought back, but the dragon did not have the power to win, and they could not regain their place in heaven. So that great dragon was thrown down once and for all. He was the serpent, the ancient snake, called the devil and Satan, who what? Deceives the whole world. He was cast down into the earth, and his angels along with him. And if you're wondering what we're dealing with, we're dealing with that serpent, we're dealing with that dragon, we're dealing with that tail that spews nothing but lies. Mm. But because he comes as an angel of what? Light? We can't tell the difference without the Holy Spirit and the Word. Ooh, that's good. You can't! That's 
That's right. That's right. It's so twisted. You can't get to the truth mm. because there is no. Truth. <laughs> but it's there. It's brought division. Do you see? It's division. Yeah. Die vision. There's one revelation that according to the scripture, without a vision, a vision, not die vision, the people perish. Happy is he who keeps the Torah. The Torah is God's revelation. It's God's vision. But now we watch television and it gives us a die vision all the time. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 1-3. Elohim said, to, said, let come to pass. Oh, this is so good. Genesis 1. I never saw this. I tell you, I'm just like I'm reading the Bible for the first time. <laughs> Elohim said, God said, let come to pass light light it doesn't even say in the hebrew let there be light it actually uses the word for light two times how important would it be if god's saying remember the earth was void there's something going on it's negative then god says this is how i'm going to heal the earth god said let there be or or light light menorah nor 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 mem the means by which light is accomplished. That's why the menorah is so powerful. He says from the beginning, let there be what? Light, light. Because he's combating the darkness. He's combating the division, if you will. Mm -hmm. This was a prophetic declaration of how Elohim would heal and restore. And his light would shine bright. In fact, there's a teaching that would say God created the heaven and the earth. That there's a teaching that the word bara actually has a connotation that God began to heal the earth. From the beginning, he began to heal because Satan, yeah. when he brought the light, he began to heal that division. Mm. Remember John chapter 1, light shined in the darkness when the word created. It's a declaration of shalom by the angel. Shalom on the earth and good will to man. When light, we need light. Light, what does light do? Light expels the darkness. What does light do? Light begins to heal. Without the light of revelation of God's word and show people, we got to show people, division does not come from Elohim. It does not come from the Lord. It comes from the serpent. Mm -hmm. The patriarchs, our fathers, They dealt with much division. We now know the cause and root of division is rooted in the demonic. Because the first division, the first murder happens from the serpent. Hagar, you'll see this. Hagar is Abraham's other wife, the Egyptian wife, that he marries... Because Sarah tells him, Holy Spirit tells him, marry Hagar because I can't give you children and she will. But then Hagar, I want you to see this, she has contempt. She diminishes Sarah because she can conceive a son from Abraham, but Sarah can't. I want you to see division. Hatred. Hagar then scoffs at Isaac after he's weaned. Literally means she laughed outright in merriment or scorn. And by implication, she sports, she laughs, she mocks. Have you ever been around people that mock and laugh and scorn? It's Scripture. You see it. The patriarchs dealt with it. It's not God's way. Mm -hmm. Sarah gets back by treating Hagar so harsh that she flees, fear, flees away. So now you're going to see. Tip for tap. Now you're going to see. Do it to me. I'm going to do it to you. Yeah. 
that's where the pettiness comes in. Do you see that? Oh, Lord. <laughs> now, and, it, and, and then, okay, let, let's read it real quick in Genesis 16. I don't want to, I want to skip over it, but we need to read it. The angel of the Lord said to her, go back to your mistress, humbly submit to her control. And the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so they shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord continued, see now, you're with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name, look at this, Ishmael. Look how prophetic this name is. Look what it means. God, God hears. Shema El Shema. Ishmael. Shema. You hear God. This is the prophetic destiny for Ishmael. To hear God. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna, you're, they, that's why they got to come to the truth. Yeah. Because that that's in their, their name. They know. You talk to I was talking to a Muslim the other day. I said, You know about Ishmael then. They look at me like, how do you know about Ishmael? I said, He's the firstborn of Abraham, but the promise came to Isaac. And I, but look look at also the prophetic destiny. Look what it says. Look at look at it. Yeah. Ishmael, he's the one that he's gonna hear God. Because the Lord has heard and paid attention to your affliction. And he will be a wild ass among men. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. Look at this. He will live to the east on the borders of all his kinsmen. So where are the seed of Ishmael going to live? They're going to live next to Israel. And they're going to always be around. You're not going to get rid of them. Because here in the scripture. And they're going to be fighting you the whole time. Because here it says it in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Their hand will be a what? Against every man. So they're not going to be a hand against, against Israel. They're going to hate everybody. Have you ever tried to reason with somebody with this mentality? Good luck. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in luck. <laughs> Okay. Verse 13. So he called the name of the Lord. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. And she said, have I not even here in the wilderness looked upon him who sees me and lived? Or have I also seen, look at this, the future purposes or designs of him who sees me? You think that the Lord doesn't know about the division in the Middle East? He prophesied it. Where did it come from? Hagar and Sarah couldn't get along. An Egyptian and a Jew, if you will, or a Hebrew, if you will. I believe one of the hardest things Abraham did in his whole life, and it says it in the scriptures, he didn't want to do it, but God said, you've got to listen to your wife. One of the hardest things he had to do, a father is not natural. You understand, this is so unnatural, especially for a man that was known as a father of fathers. This ain't about, if you have a kid, when you have, can you imagine, Phil, sending your kid and say, go, I don't ever want to see you again. And literally send him away with nothing. It's unnatural. It's a mystery of the Bible. This is why the Bible says in the book of Malachi, in the last days, God will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Somehow, because God needed to get the, the seed through Isaac, there had to be that separation, but it's not permanent. Mm -mm. You, because you'll see it in the scriptures right. that Ishmael, the Egyptians, actually become part, and the Assyrians even, they become like a trinity. Israel, Assyria, and Egypt. And that's Ishmael. Yes. And they all worship the same God. Hallelujah. All right, so let's... Now, Jacob has sons. He's changed his name to Israel. He has a favorite son. Hebrew. Just think about how you would feel if you're not the favorite right. son. That's right. That's the favorite son gets the beautiful robe. The favorite son gets all the pampering. And, a, and by the way, the favorite son has dreams of all the brothers bowing down and mom and dad worshiping him. How would that make you feel? Dad doesn't say anything about it. And 
and they decide they're going to kill their brother. They don't do it, but they almost do. Instead, they send him off as a slave. Now look in Genesis 37. I just want you to see this. When his brother saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, look at this, they hated him and could not speak to him in shalom. Then Joseph dreamed a dream and told his brothers and they hated him even more. If you can't see division the right there, these are Hebrew people. And he said to them, please listen to the dream I dream. If you can't see why there's so much turmoil amongst God's people, brothers hating each other, so much they couldn't even talk. We can't talk. Why? Because hatred causes such a bitter root in us, we can't speak peaceably. We don't want shalom. We don't want you to be whole. We don't want you to be helped. We want to destroy you. Now look what my, now pick up on this in Matthew 12. Look at the words of Jesus. Knowing their thoughts, Yeshua said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is what? Destroyed. Is that not Satan's plan? Divide the kingdoms? If I divide the kingdoms, what if I divide the brothers? If I divide the families, what's going to happen? Destruction. They'll destroy themselves. I don't even have to do anything. I just get them to hate each other because that one's this and that one's that. And I just point out their differences and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and, no, but this part is the next part. And every city whew, or house divided against itself will not stand. And I told you, you need to start looking at that word house House in the Bible has to do with a family name. So if you get a family name to be divided and they don't understand that they have the same last, you have the same name. But if Satan can divide that house, so just like the house of Israel and the house of Judah, they had the same patriarchs, they had the same covenant, they had the same father, but yet now they hate each other. And what's going to happen? They'll destroy themselves. Whew. Look at Isaiah 56. And to the foreigners who join themselves to Yahweh to worship him, those who want to be his servants and love the name of Yahweh, all who honor the Sabbath and do not disregard it, who remain true to my covenant, I make this promise, I will welcome you. Look at this. What does God say? I will welcome you into my holy mountain and I will make you joyful in my house of prayer. You come into his house. We sang a song last week about his house. I'll make you joyful in my house of prayer. I will accept every sacrifice and offering you place on my altar. For my house of worship will be known as a house of prayer for just somebody. For just the elite. For just those Jews. No, it says for all people. This is, this is the prophets. This is part of God's instruction. It's, remember I said it, it's a theme throughout the whole Bible. David sees, says it. Uh, it's over. The prophets say it. It's, Moses says it over and over. There's one law, law. There's one law. There's one Torah for all the people who come. Mm -hmm. They all get the blessing. If they live in the land. They get the inheritance of that tribe. That's Period. Right. It was right. God's way from the beginning. There's one house. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If you understand that the house, the houses became divided after the death of Solomon. There was what the 12 tribes of Israel was a unified house. There was no separation in the days of David. They all, it was not the southern and the northern kingdom. It wasn't the house of Israel and Judah. They were all one. But after Solomon died, because Solomon was so wicked in his worship of false gods, 
Two of the kingdoms were given him, Judah and Benjamin, and ten tribes were separated, and they became known as the northern house, uh, northern kingdom of the house of Israel, and there was a separation. And after that, they actually began a war. They're one people. They have one father, Abraham. Wait a minute. Could this be the answer to the problem in the church? Who cares what denomination right. we yes. put on it? Amen. Maybe That's we should right. throw it all out. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Amen. We're one house of the Lord. Yes. The body of Messiah. Where does it say anymore that we have, no, I'm a Jewish believer. No, I'm a Cuban believer. No, I'm an Hispanic believer. What? Where does it say that? Why do we have to identify? Rather than no, I'm part of the house. I'm part of the family. I don't care what meant, what what section you or or, you, or, you, or whatever you look. Maybe I don't know how to be put it. I don't think like that. It's hard for me. So now go to the page four because I already told you what happened. Because I say what the kingdoms got divided. And that spirit of division, I want you to know, is in the Hebrew people today. Yes, yes. It's in the Messianic world. Yes. It's in the Hebrew Christian world, if you could call that. It's in the it's in the church. the church world. It's all there, that root of division. Mm. But Jesus said, a house what? Divide. Why can't we? Why don't we have an impact in society today? I want you to really think about it. Why do we not have the influence? Why can't we be a light? When, how can we be a light when our light is being put out by the darkness? How can we be a light when we are doing everything the false lamp, the wicked lamp does, rather than showing the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, the counsel? We don't have no counsel of God. We don't have the power of God, the reverence of God. We don't have any of those seven spirits of the Lord, but instead we show people how divided we are and how we talk about each other. With enmity. Pastors hating pastors. This fight's happening. In churches. So Jesus even prophesied or told parables and stories about a garment. Because when the kingdom was rent. The, the prophet had a garment and he rent the garment into 10 and 12 pieces, 12 pieces. And he gave two pieces to Jeroboam and he gave and, and he said, he said, he gave 10 pieces to Jeroboam uh, and, and two pieces were going to go to Solomon's son, Rehoboam. 12. So two and 10 is 12. But when Jesus, uh, this is why I want to tell you everything in the New Testament is in the Old Testament. Everything in the Old Testament revealed in the New Testament. But look in Luke chapter 5. He spake a parable to them. No man puts what? A new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new makes a tear or a rent. So now you've got a tear in the garment. And the piece that was taken out of the new what does this not do? It doesn't agree. There's division here because now this is a new garment and you have an old garment and we're going to try to patch your old garment with this new piece. And he says it can't happen because they're not in what? Agreement. You know what the Lord is actually saying? I have to make you a one new man. Where you don't identify with that torn or ripped kingdom anymore. That's why I have to put give you a new wineskin for the new wine. Okay, so you'll see that there's division. They begin to fight each other. And I think we see that today. That that is part of the root of division. But here's the promise of God. Does division surprise the Lord? No. Does he know about it? Absolutely. Did he prophesy it? Yes. But remember, 
What did we say was the answer to the division? The one new man. Once you understand the unity, the oneness of whatever you came out of doesn't make you who you are. Right. It's what you come into yeah. that defines you. Your greater identity is not what your, your culture, your greater identity is being in Messiah. Now I'll show you this. Look in Jeremiah 3. In those days, there's a prophecy. In those days, the house of Judah will walk with the house of Israel. And they will come together out of the land of the north to the land that I gave for an inheritance to, their, to your fathers. But I said... How I desire to put you among the children and give you a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the armies of the nations. And I said, you shall call me. It's so good. What are they going to call him? My you father. shall call me my, my father and shall not turn away from following me. Now, when Jesus ascended, what did he say? I ascend to my father and your father. The healing of the nations of the division is found when you know who your daddy is. Who's your daddy? That's why we call him Abba, Papa, Father. Because once you know that, God said, in that day, Judah and Ephraim, and really, if you understand this, and we've taught this before, that when the nations come to the Lord, they actually come through the house of Ephraim or the house of Israel who got swallowed up by the nations. And when Jesus died on the cross, he made a way for all the nations to come into covenant through his blood. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You'll, you'll see this here in the scripture in a moment. Now. Ezekiel's prophesying the same thing. Yahweh's word came to me saying, you son of man, take, look at this, one stick and ride on it for Judah and the children of Israel and his companions. Now there's one stick for Judah. Now for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel, his companions. So you're going to take a stick for Judah and, you, and I wish I had my sticks with me. And you're going to take a stick for Ephraim. And Judah's going to represent all the families of Judah, even Benjamin. Ephraim's going to je Eph represent all the other tribes. He's going to represent every other tribe, those ten tribes that God He says there's two sticks. Everybody say two. 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 Let me put it this way. There's an Adam and there's an Eve. There's a bride, there's a bridegroom. <laughs> It, it, okay, then look what he says, verse 17. Then join them, glue them, adhere them to one another for yourself to one another. What are they, they're becoming what? To one another. Look at this. Into how many? Into one. one. Six. Hallelujah. Pastor Ken, that's impossible. I know it's impossible. Only God can take two and make them one. It's a work of God. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The grafting process, the intertwining process is by the Spirit. Join them for yourself to one another into one stick that they may become, look at this, one in your hand. When the, this is what Jesus did on the cross. When the children of the people speak to you saying, won't you show us? What you mean by these? Tell them, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel with his companions, and I will put them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. They'll be one in my hand. I don't know how many times God has to say this. The sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Say to them, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations where they've gone and I will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. I will make them, oh my goodness, one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. One, how many? 
One king will be king to them all. They will no longer be two nations. If that's not plain, can you say it? They will no longer be two nations. The, the vision will be totally healed. They won't be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all because they will become one new man in Messiah. Yes. It doesn't matter that they were part of Ephraim. It doesn't matter that they were part of Benjamin in Messiah. There's only one new man. Hallelujah. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither bond nor female. For you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. And I'm telling you, I'm preaching this. And I know there's resistance for people. Because Jews and Hebrews and Christians and nations people, they don't like this term one new man. Because you want to keep talking about your old identity. You want to keep bringing up who you are in the flesh. And God says, I, that is not the most important thing. That's right. That's right. And as long as you lean back on your flesh, you're going to lean right back into division. But when you start walking in the Spirit, when you start looking up, you're going to start seeing people as one in Messiah, and you literally will be colorblind. You'll be ethnic blind. You'll be culture blind, if you will. And if you can't see in the book of Acts that they dealt with this same situation when certain members of the community didn't get the food because they weren't of the same culture. They dealt with the same spirit of division that God said is broken in the one new man. You're one. Everyone gets the same. That's right. That's right. And to prove everyone got the same, they anointed deacons, and the deacons made sure everyone got the same. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. we need deacons today. Hallelujah. Yes. And make sure everyone in the church is taken care of. No one's treated second class. Yes. Yes. That's God's justice. That's God's righteousness. And anytime we treat people different, and Paul warns us, if somebody's rich and they come in, you don't treat them differently. If somebody's poor, you don't treat them. Mm -hmm. In fact, either way is injustice. Right. Right. Hallelujah, Pastor Ken. That's good yeah. preaching. Yes, this is Torah. This is the Word of God. This is what happens when we're one in Messiah. We we're Abraham's seed. We're heirs according to the promise. God doesn't have any sons that are less or any daughters that are less. Mm -hmm. Once you get this in your heart, you'll never let a, a earthly person rule over you and control you and dominate you because you have one Lord, you have one faith, you have one baptism, and no man. That's right. Can tell you you're not. Amen. That's right. Because God says you are. You're bone of my bone. You're flesh of my flesh. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. That's how serious it is in Ephesians chapter 5. He talks about the covenant of man and woman. And then he says, I'm telling you a mystery. I want you to know, I'm not even talking about a man and woman. I'm talking about Christ and his church. You are one. He nourishes you. He cherishes you. He doesn't have any people in his church, in his body. That should ever feel or be treated anything other than as one new man. The least, uh, uh, we'll read it right here. Hebrews 8. It's also in Jeremiah 31. For God does find fault with the people when he says, see the days are coming, says Adonai. I will establish over the house of Israel, this is so important, and over the house of Yehuda a new covenant. The word new could also be called renewed. It's the same as the moon. The moon is a new moon, but it's actually a renewed moon. It's not really a new moon. That's the same way the covenant is. It's a renewed covenant. It shall not be like the covenant which I made with their fathers on the day I took them by their hand and led them forth out of the land of Egypt. Because they, for their part, everybody says their part. Their part. Their part. This is why, because we have a part. This is what's going on today. We're not doing our part. Did not remain faithful to my covenant. So as for my part, I stopped concerning myself with them, says Adonai. This is really the divorce with Ephraim. For this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Adonai. Look, look what he says. 
I will put my Torah. This is New Covenant. This is in the book of Hebrews. God says, I will put my Torah in their minds and write it on their hearts. Look at this. I will be their God. And what? They, they will be whose people? Mine. Who, whose people are you? Who are God's people? If we just get that, I know you, you guys know this, but those watching uh, in any other nation, if you want to say you are God's people called by his name. Hallelujah. But now look at verse 11. None of them will teach his fellow citizen or his brother. The, you understand? Know They're not looking down on somebody. They're not or lifting somebody else up. They're not doing that. None of them will teach his fellow citizen or brother saying, do you know Adonai? Do you know the Lord? Do you know Yahweh? Do you know him? Look at this. It says, For all will know me. Look at this. From the least. Hallelujah. To the greatest. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to know the Lord. And that's going to be what matters. Because I will be merciful toward their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. We all came into, came, come into the covenant the same way. We bow our knees. We cry out for mercy. We repent of our sins. We come in through the cross. We don't stop at the cross but we got to get go through the cross. If you don't go through the cross, you can't be saved. Amen. There's one way to get to God, right? Yes. He is the way, the truth, and life. you got to bow your knee. If, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. That's what the scripture says. But now, look at this. He says, I'll remember their sin no more. Let me close with this scripture. Acts 15. After much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days, God chose from among you that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the message of the good news and believe. And God, who knows the heart, tested them by... I don't know what happened there. Just testified. Just as he did for us. Now, look at verse 9. He made. No Do you see that? Yes. Does God distinguish? No. He made no distinguish distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts through pain. Mm -hmm. Let me ask something. If God can make no distinction as the Father, do you think today you can stop making distinctions? And you start treating people as brothers and yep. sisters and not, not don't be an agent of divisiveness. Let, let me just put it this way. Don't participate in it. Be an agent. Like we were saying about let the, let the light yeah. of God shine out of you to be a light and love everybody. Yes. Be nice to everybody. 